Hey, all right, good morning. Got some great verses here. And it's really funny because I, I, I did it yesterday, but I didn't finish it up. I got squirreled and started talking about things going on at work because it's really weird. What, what their whole business plan is, it's Stellantis, right? Is uh, do more with less. And uh, so we're not getting the parts. We're not getting the support. We're not getting the equipment that we need to do the jobs. I think they're doing this intentionally. I mean, it, they would have to be. Um, so we're, we're always modifying stuff, robbing Peter to pay Paul, right? Stealing old parts off, or I shouldn't see old parts, but off machines that are idled, but we'll need to run at some point to fix machines that are currently running and different things. It's, it's just a messed up business plan. I don't, I don't understand. Um, what they're doing really it's it's like they're shooting themselves in the foot um they're trying to save money because we do produce a lot of scrap but the whole reason we're producing a lot of scrap like over 20 percent of what comes off the end of the lines is because things aren't maintained properly they're not done properly but they don't want to give us the time they don't want to work overtime or weekends or holidays to do it because you can't really work on the machines when they're running and now if they break down we're like i'm in a position assigned to the press room there's 31 press lines and each line has between one or five different you know presses in a line and there's robotic systems and transfer systems and conveyors and then there's cranes we got to use we build platforms stairways railing guarding safety features we keep everything up and running replace conveyor belts and uh you know vacuum systems and stuff we all work on it all the tradesmen right electricians pipe fitters mill rights machine repair so anyways, um, yeah, and they've cut our head, head so much in the trades because we're all overhead. So that's their short-term answer to try to save money. Cut heads. Don't replace people who are retiring and uh, just put more work on the people that are currently there. So they're trying to have us pull double duty in a way. They want us to watch you know, be there like Johnny on the spot. If a line breaks down, we got to be right there and get it up and running as quickly as we can. Right. But like I said, we're not getting the proper parts or equipment and often they don't even have new parts. We have to go steal it from another line that might be idled or go search because they try to save spare parts in the basement and stuff, which is wise, you know, but who's to say that stuff's, you know, good to go or how long that'll last because it's decades old too, you know, if not 40 or 50 years old. So it's kind of crazy. There's no guarantee when we get an old part that it's going to uh, work properly you know, still be functioning. Um, so it's, but then they want us to be working 24 seven. I mean, they want us all to be busy all day long. So they're giving us PMs and work tickets to work on these lines or projects, you know, building guardrails or platforms or, or whatever it is, or repairing stuff that's been damaged. They want us to be doing that. But then when a line breaks down, they want to yank us to go repair the line as well. And, uh, it's really going to end up biting them in the butt because, yeah, I mean, you got all your tools out, you're all laid out, you're locked out many times on different things. And before you can go fix that line, you're going to have to pick up all your tools. You ain't going to leave them out because unfortunately people will steal them. I've had tools stolen right off the, our work cart before. So um, it's sad, but it happens. And uh, so you got to pick up all your tools, close up whatever you're working on, square it away so nothing's in the way. No one could get trip or fall or get hurt on something you've you've got taken apart and, and then you got to remove your locks and then go and fix whatever's broke if you can and and here's the funny part like if you're working on a machine or something or a part of a machine conveyor transfer system whatever that needs to be repaired and they want it to run like by lunchtime or by last break or you know or the next shift and they want you out of there by lunchtime or the last break so they can run it to make sure everything's working properly and if you got it already ripped apart and you're working on it and then go work on something else and it could, who, who knows how long the jobs could take. I mean, then both lines might end up being down. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's really a poor business plan because in reality with, with so many things that need to be repaired oil, like I said, oil leaks are just astronomical there. And one oil tote, I don't know how many gallons it holds, costs over 30, like around $35,000. And they go through multiple oil totes a day because they have so much leakage. And I'm talking about hydraulic oil and stuff like that because they're not bringing us in to repair the leaks and put new seals on all the different pieces of equipment. 
And then also uh, air leaks, man. There's air leaks everywhere because there's there's counterbalance cylinders on all these transfer systems and different things and conveyors even. And there's airlines everywhere, right? Everywhere. And uh, they're leaking like crazy all over the building. If they and, and this is legit. If they would just replace or repair, I should say, 50%, just half, if they could get close to that, just half of just the air leaks, not even the oil leaks, just the air leaks, no lie, they would save well over a million dollars a year. I mean, if this was your business, your company, wouldn't you do that? I mean, in the short term, you're going to take a hit on expense because you got to bring in at least, uh, you know, probably four tradesmen in a specific trade area to work on oil leaks or airlines or whatever. And you would have to do it probably for about uh, 10, 10, 15 weeks straight. But you're only spending like each man is making less than a thousand dollars coming in on a Saturday and Sunday. Right. So you're, you're spending less than a thousand dollars per head you know, times, let's say 10, 15 weeks. So, so what's that, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, 30, $40,000. But if you just did that for about 10, 15 weeks and, and the parts, which are going to cost as well, um, you know, so you, you might have a hundred thousand dollars invested into fixing these things, but over the course of the year, you're going to save over a million dollars. Mm, I think that would be the long-term plan, but then they would have to plan, schedule, do the logistics, order parts. And we're, we give them pictures and part numbers and I mean, everything. So we supply them with all the information they need, but then they'd have to do their job properly. And uh, fortunately that don't seem like it's happening up at the top level. And and, and then their feet are, are getting uh, bound up because it goes to our plant saying, hey, we need these parts, but then it also has to be approved through corporate. Right. So there's a bunch of red tape involved. So I think they're doing it intentionally so they can just bring in contractors. Con contractors can just get the parts like that day and then back charge the company for the for the parts. But then they up the charge for the parts, I'm sure. So they're actually paying far more in the long run. But, you know, short term by them doing what they're doing, it appears like they're saving money, but they're really not fixing anything in the long run. It'll shoot them in the food. But I don't I don't understand their business plan, how they're doing it. You know, it, it's really going to end up hurting them in the long run. It's very short. -sighted. And that's what happens when you get a bunch of college degree people who've never actually set foot and actually did physical work on the floor. They they don't know. People can come up with all the plans and and go to school for engineering and design and design all these things. But if you don't have the actual grunts that get out there and get it done and have practical application, know what actually will work or won't because some of their plans many times has to be revised by the people who are actually building it and put it together because from experience, they, they know that this is too tight of a tolerance or this isn't going to work right or you didn't, this isn't, you didn't account for this or that. Many things that we know through experience for, from decades of experience of doing the work so anyways, you know, enough of that. Um, and, you know, I'm not even going to go into the safety aspect of it. It's it's just so dangerous there. It's unreal. They've lost track of everything. They bypassed and jumped out. And a lot of it is safety items and issues. I'm sure OSHA would have a lot to say about that. But from what I can tell, they're bought and paid for and they get a big heads up warning and, you know, oh, here's what you have to do. And then they'll say they did stuff like we write up work tickets all the time. And once they get sold, they turn red and people at corporate see it and say, hey, why aren't you addressing this? And then our management, upper management where we're at, they tell someone to buy it all off to make look make it look like the work is done, but it's not done. So they make themselves look good, but, you know, nothing's really getting done. It's just like lipstick, lipstick on a pig. And, and speaking of that. This, this verse here, you would have never thought like it ties into the story of the prodigal son, how he left his father's house, took his inheritance, right? Which is kind of like a big slap in the face. Took his inheritance and he went and squandered it on lascivious living, right? He just had women and wine and food and this. And then he spent all his inheritance and he was feeding the pigs. And I believe he was even eating the same. He, he got to such a low point and so hungry because of his lack of wealth, right? Lack of um, um, support that uh, 
he woke up in a pig pen and he was eating the same food as the pigs even. So he came to his senses. He said, look, even the servants in my father's house are treated better than I am and have plenty of food to eat and, uh, and, and somewhere to lay their head and all this. I'm going to go home to my father, beg his forgiveness, and uh, hopefully he'll hire me even as one of his servants because they're even treated better than he's being treated out there in the pig pen, right? Feeding the pigs and consuming the same food. Okay, so how does this tie into this? This is in Matthew 8, and I'm going to read 27 through 31, but uh, the verse I really felt the Spirit impress on me was verse 28. And, uh, but, and I'm not going to go over any other words except one in uh, the last verse here, verse 31. And, uh, and you'll see how it's tied. Well, you'll see how it's tied in even before that. But uh, in this is the way his Holy Spirit unrolled the scrolls to me, and that's what has to happen. The Lamb of God is the only one who can unroll the scrolls, break the seals, Satan put over you through your carnal fleshly minds and the seven church, all these things, the different branches of all the churches who have been teaching something uh, kind of incorrectly. And I'm not going to dog any church because I don't think many of them are doing it intentionally, but I do think we've lost a lot in translation. And I think purposely so in some cases, um, because it was about control and like keeping order, right? Making things simple, oversimplified, but holding the truth back, especially all the truth, right? When you don't have all the information, you're deceived. And, and like I said, it's easier to deceive someone than to point out that they've been deceived. Okay. So there's that. And they've just been believing a lie for so long. And I've seen that in multiple verses because of how long they've been believing it and the great number of people who are, are believing it, that it's been taught for so long and that's why they're believing it. And that's part of the reason that Christ will return and everything else because of it. And, and it gets, it gets revealed actually in verse 28 pretty clearly here, but like, like you never see it just reading it as it is. You, it, you have to be led by the good shepherd who is Jesus Christ through the gift of his Holy Spirit that reveals all things unto you, the truth, uh, uh, this living water that flows from the throne of God that nourishes your mind and your heart, right? That nourishes you and makes you grow up strong spiritually in the light of the truth, right? Because we're all called trees. We are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's our body, the abode of light and darkness. The darkness is attached to this world, attached to Satan. He owns it, which is your flesh. That is his throne. And your soul, which is a part of the supreme God, which is the light that is within you. That's been covered over by this darkness of your physical form. Okay. And if you can grasp that concept, you will understand the Bible far more clear. We're not born into life. We're born into death. We separated ourselves from God. We all partook of the sin, the depravity, lascivious living, right? Like the prodigal son of this world by taking on these rotten, dying, decaying physical forms, these mortal bodies that only beget suffering and pain and everything else. But God is using this, right, experience to teach us a lesson so we can realize how who he is, how much he loves us, how much greater he is and everything else and that he does deserve our praise and worship and honor. He himself deserves all of that. And uh, he has nothing. There's no guile in him. He has nothing but good intentions. See, where I work, it's it's all about deception, man. They're fudging the books, fudging the numbers to make themselves look good, to rise one above the other, right? And uh, get bigger bonuses and salaries and different things. But all the while, everything is slowly rotting, dying, decaying, and falling apart. But they're lying and saying it isn't, but yet it is. And what that does is put a, a, a heavier burden on the workers. You know, they're cutting heads and, and putting more work on the employees that are there. But sooner or later, this whole business plan they got to do more with less is going to bite them in the butt in the long run. There's no doubt about it. They can't continue doing what they're doing for too long. They're very short-sighted in their, their future plans, very short-sighted. You know, and I don't know if that's just a particular the the leadership at each individual plant because it's been at pretty much every plant. The last plant I at was at was a lot smaller, <clears throat> and they actually did things a whole lot better. At least when we fix things, we fix things correctly or temporarily, and then correctly. You know, later on, 
this place doesn't even do that. And they don't care about our safety whatsoever. They talk about safety, but they do not care. They, I can tell you, man, like, like just one thing, it's a federally mandated regulation through OSHA that every single overhead door, and we got doors where each panel, and there's three panels on some of these large bay doors that weigh almost 2000 pounds. So every single, and these press doors are as big as a house on the presses, big as a house. And they're all under OSHA regulations, federal, supposed to have a safety strip. So if it comes down, you are not impinged or entrapped or hurt or injured or it doesn't damage anything. So it has a safety strip. So when it touches it, there's a sensor. It will stop and reverse. Many of them are supposed to reverse and go back up. So the door doesn't get damaged. No one gets hurt. No one gets trapped. Nothing bad will happen. Um, but not one safety strip. Eh, there might be, well, I shouldn't say one, but there might be a couple, but there's hundreds of doors in that building on the docks, on all the press lines and, and entry doors into the plant where the steel's getting unloaded, big semis pull through. I mean, these are big, heavy doors, many of them. And, uh, not one of the safety strips work. They just bypass it. Keep on moving. You know, you can do more than what the federal government recommends or, or mandates, right? For safety reasons but you can't do less. They're supposed to be maintained and uh, tested to make sure they're operational. Uh, I, I don't know how often, but it's supposed to be done yearly, right? I'm not sure how often, but it's that is supposed to be done yearly, but none of them work. And that's just one small example of safety stuff they bypass. But then they always preach safety. Oh, you got to work safe. If you don't have your gloves or glasses on, we're going to give you five days off without pay. Or if you walk inside of a press or a, a area, a work area, and you, you don't walk out properly, and uh, then you're getting 30 days off without pay. And then, you know, it's, it's, and if you get, do it like two, two or three times, you're fired, you know, two or three strikes against you. And they're really looking to push that, but yet all the things they should do. We got a racking system there that holds hundreds of thousands of pounds of, of tons, I should say, hundreds of thousands of tons of blanks that the hilos come out. They got a big retriever, goes up and grabs all this heavy, heavy steel, brings it down, loads it onto a cart, it pulls out, the hilos get it and take it to the lines to get ran through. And uh, that racking system, the foundation underneath all of them is falling, crumbling away. And it's been for years. Then they know it. They've had estimates to rebuild it from the foundation up, which would cost them probably at this point, when they had the estimate, which was like 14 years ago, it was over $20 million. But so they have to spend money. But yeah, if this thing falls through the, that with all this weight on it and falls and falls over, it could knock down that whole thing. Or there's tunnels under there. We walk through to work on conveyors and different things underneath there. And if we're under there and it caves in, you're dead. If it falls over, anybody around there, high-low drivers, operators that operate the system could all be killed. But the plant don't care about that because it's going to cost them millions of dollars to fix it. But yet they're preaching, oh, safety's number one. Yeah, right. See, so you see how it is? It's kind of a, a smaller example of how the entire world is. Okay. So Let's get into this because all this is revealed in these verses here. So this is found in Matthew 8, and I'm reading 27 through uh, 31. But the men marveled, saying, what manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Okay, so they were crossing over, I believe, the Sea of Galilee to go somewhere else. And they were, Christ, I think this is when Christ was asleep, and uh, they were worried that they were going to die out there, right, because of the storm and the winds. Then he came up and said, peace be still calmed everything down. So they're like, uh, so they all marveled, what manner of man is this? Even the winds and the sea obey him. He's God incarnate is who he is, the word that was made flesh. Okay, so now here's verse 28. The one is spirit, his Holy Spirit led me through, unrolled the scrolls to me, Christ himself through the gift of his Holy Spirit. You can believe it or not, I'm not claiming to be Betty better than anybody. I, I struggle and fight with my flesh daily. <laughs> daily. It is a battle because our flesh is of the earth. It's here. It's inherently wicked and evil. And it wars against our spirit, against our soul, all that. It's like you have a duality. And, and anyways, it's all pointed out in this verse. So here's verse 28. And when he has come to the other side, into the country of Gergesen's there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. Okay, so 
of every word. Every word has so much more meaning than you would think. This word country, the word Gergesons, uh, uh, two possessed with devils coming, coming out of, you know, these tombs means more than you might think. All this. Okay, so now I'll, I'll read it to you the way his Holy Spirit unrolled it to me. And, uh, you know, it's up to you. You can look into it, but you, you have to be led by a spirit through it because it can mean so many things. He, like I said, I don't, he, I don't even know. It's, you know, he makes words stand out, tells me to look up words in the Latin and the Greek, all these different things. And, he, you know, he leads me through it. Words that you wouldn't think would matter. But he's like, nope, it means more than you think. Look it up. And then I hear his voice telling me. And it's, uh, you know. Believe it or not. So here we go. Matthew 8, 28. Truly at this time when Christ, who is God incarnate, came into this world to show, basically reveal himself and establish, to establish his word, the truth of his word, so it can find influence among us here in this world with all who will accept it by accepting him, Jesus Christ, into our hearts, right? So they may grow, so we all may grow in the light of it, of this truth that is being revealed through us from God himself, through Christ, his only begotten son, his Alpha and Omega, first and last and only physical representation of God himself, one of a kind, monogene, one of a kind. And that was found in his blood. If you look up Ron Wyatt and, you know, when he found the Ark of the Covenant and, and, uh, had blood tested that was on it. It was Christ because it was in Golgotha, buried underneath in Jeremiah's grotto. And it, and man, and people say, oh, no, the Ark of the Covenant's here. Hey, look, <laughs> he's no liar. Ron Wyatt was no liar. That is for sure. He is a good man. And I hope you see that. I think I've attached it to some other videos, at least one in the past. But uh, it, you can look it up, Ron Wyatt and the Ark of the Covenant, and listen to that story and how the blood was tested. One, I think it was one type of chromosome from his mother, who was earthly, fleshly, but yet it was male, obviously. Jesus Christ. So, it, yeah, it's just crazy. And the blood came back alive. It was, it's just amazing. So, anyways, and uh, was it even the blood on the Shroud of Turin? Well, is that? Yeah, there's so, so many things, man that point to the truth, that reveal it. And people refuse to believe it because there's so much chaos and deception around it. They try to hide the truth from us in every way, our history and everything else. This world is just so evil and wicked. It's a prison. Your body's your prison suit. You're not born into life. You're born into death. Once you understand that and that your body is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the abode of light and darkness, you'll start understanding the word far more clear. So, so that they may grow in the light of it. For a purpose, and this was all done for a purpose, to find and bring home his lost sheep, his children who were deceived into partaking of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thus separating themselves from him and wandering away to do their own thing, right? To be lost, becoming blind and deaf, cut off from him, like a branch pruned, cut off the tree of life that fell to the earth no longer being nourished by the living water that gives true life. And this is the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the truth that comes directly from his Holy Spirit, that comes from God's Holy Spirit, who reveals the truth to us so that we can be set at one again, set at one again, again. That's why our relationship has to be reconciled, restored that's why he says, I knew you before I knit you together in your mother's womb. There's the things are so much more literal than we're being taught. Okay. By the churches. So we can be set at one again with him to be of one mind, right? Be in agreement, come into agreement with him and his word. So we will never perish. So God himself crossed over to the other side into this physical temporal realm that's in opposition to him and the truth that hates the truth. Being full in this world is full of chaos and confusion. And he did this at a point in time when the majority of this world had been turned backwards, uh, deceived into believing a lie. Oh, you're born into life, not death, and all these other things. From a, seeing things from a, a, a physical carnal perspective, which is just the opposite of the truth, basically. Because the spiritual is revealed through the physical that no man is with excuse, but it's whether you can accept the truth or not. 
basically. That's it. Okay. Um, so he came into this physical temporal realm, crossed over in the land of his enemies, right? That is full of chaos and confusion at a point in time when the majority of the world uh, was turned backwards, deceived and believing to lie and refusing and hating the truth. Boy, don't that sound a lot like today? Why do you think he's going to come back? Yeah, about the same things going on, right? Uh, going into this land that lies between two extremities. These, and this was found in the word country. And I was looking at through the Thayers, if you want to know. And country, the word is a Greek word, 5561. Anyways, and going into this land that lies between two extremities, two places of finality, okay, coming here. So he came here, like that will decide, like we're in a state of limbo, kind of like purgatory, sort of this world. We're in a state here that will decide where you end up. For eternity. You're either going to go back home if you put your faith and trust in Christ and return home, or you're going to end up in hell because you've rejected the truth, rejecting the word of God, rejecting God himself incarnate was Christ. Okay. And you'll end up in hell for eternity. This lake of fire that was made for Satan and his angels. And the churches say, see, it was never made for us. Well, think again, guess who we are? There you go. Our identity has been concealed from us and hidden. We are one of God's stars, princes, angels. It's what it says in multiple verses throughout the Bible, but you'll never see it clearly reading it on the surface. You got to be led through it by the spirit and look at, look at it all. I know it's crazy. And most people will vehemently reject it, <clears throat> but this truth has been hidden from us for a long, long, long time. Okay. So when the majority of this world was turned backwards, being deceived into believing a lie, refusing and hating the truth, going into this land. So he came into this world, this land, the earth that lies between two extremities, two places of finality, coming here to cultivate it, to cultivate the earth, cultivating us, to prepare us, to reveal it by revealing the truth to us so we can go back home, so we can grow in the light of the truth, like a tree, like a plant, because we're all called trees, right? tree of the knowledge of good and evil in this world, but he like plucks you out, separates you from the forest, like taking a tree. You don't even know you're in a forest, but then when you're taken out and set up on high, then you can see, oh my gosh, I was surrounded by all these trees. I was in a forest, you know? So anyways, then you can see what the world truly is and your identity is only found when you are in Christ and you'll start to really see your eyes will be opened, right? Spiritually, your spiritual eyes of your mind and your heart. So Coming here to cultivate us, basically, the earth, because we're in an earthen vessel, right? Formed from the clay, our, our physical being, these temporary physical forms. Okay, uh, like turning over, like it's almost like turning over the soil, turning over the rule and authority of Satan over us from within. So in this place that has created a chasm, a great gulf between us and our creator that is impassable for us on our own. So we can recognize, okay, to recognize, what, to, yeah, yeah, it's impossible for us to uh, understand on our own or even to recognize on our own. So he came here as a stranger to draw near unto us in this land that is full of God's enemies, stealthily coming, going, it's like, stealthily going behind the enemy lines to rescue and save the prisoners, the captives, the, all the ones who've been taken captive. That's us. We've all been taken captive here in this world. If you're here, you've been taken captive. Okay. He came here to set us free. Okay. To rescue us, to lead us out into the promised land, which is heaven. Okay. Uh, out of these uh, earthen vessels, these that are made of clay so we can grow spiritually strong and vibrant to thrive in the light so we can thrive in the light of the truth. Okay. Uh, when here he met with all who would receive him, hence receiving the truth. And what did he say? I am the way, the truth and the life, right? So receiving him, you're receiving the way to return home, the truth and true life. Cause because what we were taught is life is actually death. It's the opposite. It's so crazy how everything's been turned upside down and backwards. Okay. To, uh, so he met with all 
that used to be that are hostile to them here in this world in the opposite position, okay, in their hearts and minds, being deceived, being deceived, that are underneath, that are below in a lower state and condition, a lower place and position, okay, and that are now double minded because we have this dual, this twofold nature of mankind, the earthly, temporal, carnal nature of mankind, which uh, incites us to sin that that's of our flesh, okay, and our soul, which, you know, this earthly temporal body, but yet then our soul, which is from God above, we are all part of the supreme God, your eternal being of light and truth that has been covered over in darkness of your flesh, of your body, okay, so there is that. So our true identity has been hidden from us. Like I said, your worst enemy looks you in the mirror every single day. So as our fear, as our physical being is owned and possessed by Satan and under the influence and control of a demon, his demons, his demons, or you know, one or many, okay, being cursed and placed under the law. So we've been cursed and placed under the law. Gods and goddesses, right there. Elohim, age 430. I have said, you are all Elohim, okay? You're all gods and goddesses, children of the most high God, but you have fallen like one of my stars, princes, angels, you have fallen and now you will die like a man because you took on the tree of the knowledge of evil and you partook of the fruit of it, the sin, the depravity, the, all these things, committing spiritual fornication, okay? That's what happened, okay? Gods and goddesses who've fallen under the control of an evil spirit of the devil, who've been exiled, we were exiled and cast out by this physical birth into this world, like a flash of lightning, like when a sperm meets an egg, there's a flash of lightning, there's a spark. That's the transfer of our light, of our being, of our soul being covered and surrounded in the darkness of our flesh, okay? Like lightning falling to the earth, okay? Being drawn away from our place of origin, which is above the heavens, Okay, uh, uh, drawn away from our place of origin, the heavens, to learn. And we did this to learn. We were deceived into partaking of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, to learn and know something good and evil, which God didn't want us to experience, to suffer in any way. He loves us as nothing but good will and good intentions for us. Okay, but we were deceived into doing it. And that's why he came here to reveal the truth to us so we can get all the information and having our relationship restored and reconciled with our heavenly father through Christ and return home when our bodies perish, when our physical being dies um, or he catches it all, all up however he chooses to do it, okay? Uh, drawn away from our place of origin to learn something good and evil into these visible objects. It's like an idol, right? Uh, like a sepulcher, but it says they're like a sepulcher, a grave. They're, they're, it's like being put inside of a tomb and being trapping us within it. It's a place of in, interment, okay, which also is related, related when I was looking at it to internment. It's like being locked in a internment camp, locked in a prison, a prison. The world's a prison, your body's a prison suit. And I think that was even in the Strongs. It's like a prison to detain one during wartime. Like what, what happened during wartime? We're in a spiritual war. We're detained. We've been taken captive. Like in war, we, we're being detained and held captive in a prison, which is our body in this world. Okay, because of the sickness, this disease of sin, we, we live in like a biodome, the firmament. We've been cordoned off from the rest. <laughs> rest of God's kingdom because of this sin, this sickness, this disease of sin. <clears throat> so there's that. Okay. To decide, and, and this is all done so we can decide whom we will be loyal to, who we will side with, God or this world, which in, by default would be Satan if you side with this world. A place where those whom are dead spiritually are covered, covered by earth. It's our bodies that are these earthen vessels. They are of the earth, this covering of flesh, okay, uh, that has encamped around us like an enemy and surrounding us, surrounding our souls, like a tent placed over us that holds us captive within it, right? 
Anyways, that are of the Lord God, our souls that are of the Lord God, being surrounded by our enemy, which is Satan, and his throne is our flesh, covered in the darkness, which is willful ignorance of your flesh. Okay, mankind can't grab, this has to be revealed to you by God, otherwise men will never believe it. Okay, so there's that. Our bodies that are of the earth, this covering that has encamped against us, against our souls that are of the Lord, because of this division. So it blinds you, it deceives you. You're completely blind, deaf, dumb, deceived, completely. Okay, and that's why he came here to give sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf and all that, right? By the revealing, he came here to reveal the truth, not conceal it. Look at the word for God in Proverbs 25, 2, who conceals the truth? It's Elohim. Understand that uh, God's word is plain to those who belong to him, who are godly because of the Holy Spirit that's teaching them, being taught by Christ himself through the gift of his Holy Spirit. But it is hidden from the ungodly. They will reject it and refuse it vehemently. So crazy. And can't you see it being played out in this world? Okay, so we're camped against our souls that are of the Lord God because of this division that has not been uh, come into completion yet, this division. So we haven't been completely destroyed by the fire yet. Uh, we have not been brought to our final uh, destination, basically, our final place, our final destination. Okay, yet. Yeah into uh, this thing that holds and bears record. But we've been birthed into this thing, this physical form that has trapped us. It's like a trap, the decoy, the bait that was used by Satan to seduce us away from God, okay, into this world. And then he owns us now because we took it. So now we're, we have a debt, right? And we've been cursed by being placed under the law. It's a curse to us. We, but Christ came to set us free from this, which the penalty of law, which is forever separated from God, right? He came and paid it for us because we couldn't pay it ourselves because we already sinned. We already broke the very first commandment. Look at every single word. It's about taking on a different species, these physical forms. Look at the words. Um, anyways, where are we at here? Um, that these bodies, so now we, we are trapped within these physical forms that hold us captive and bear keeps a record records a record in our memory against us by the way we've lived our lives these bodies were designed to devour and consume us to devour and consume god's children all the sheep went astray led to the slaughter right by all and it's done by all the pressures of this world that keep your mind at unease in a state of unease unrest double-minded right and he came here, uh, let's see, to sojourn in, to sojourn in these physical forms, uh, to tarry, to wait. So we're either waiting and enduring by remaining as one with God, or we're completely attached to this world and we're deceived and we will end up perishing, being eternally separated from God. But he came here to set us at one again with himself so we can come into agreement with him and his word and be of one mind so we will never perish. So it's one or the other this would be your final destination in reference to our final state and condition. OK, that will. So and while we're here, it, it, it grows exceedingly better, our state and condition by being connected to God, restored right? Through the gift of his Holy Spirit, putting our faith and trust in Christ, or it will grow exceedingly worse, all beyond measure, beyond what you could ever fathom. Most, but most people here will grow and become darker, right? More willfully ignorant, okay? They will become very harsh with their words and actions, right? They will become very harsh, they will become very troublesome. And boy, I saw that yesterday at work, man, because we had some guys who almost went to blows over a job we were all sent to. They think by throwing more people on a job, it'll get done faster. When in actuality, only one person can be in the spot to do the work at a time. Everybody else is just kind of support. You can have a guy running the crane. So that's two, you know. And you can have maybe a guy on the ground handing the other guy tools and stuff, but really two, three guys, man. You know, but they had two jobs. If they did have other guys on the other unit on the same job, taking that apart while they were taking, because we're robbing parts from one part 
that doesn't run because it has other issues and putting on another part that, you know, that unloads the steel in the press line. But anyways, it was just a get to a big brouhaha almost. Yeah, a couple guys almost went to blows over it. You know, and so this is what's happening. You can see it here going on. Okay, they become, uh, where are we at here? Very harsh, troublesome, hard to work with, right? Uh, quarrelsome, always arguing about things. Uh, hard to approach, and this is going to get worse. Hard, they're very hard to approach. They're very difficult and even dangerous possibly by the, because they almost went to blows. This is crazy. You can see it in the world. And look at Mari Emmanuel, right, who was stabbed, preaching the word of God. And he's, he's great to listen to. He says a lot of things that I'm saying, which is amazing. Um, and uh, to hear someone else saying it, right? The people who know. And uh, yeah, he got stabbed by, a, you know, someone of a different faith, I'll just say. That isn't Christian. Yeah, it's so crazy, man. How, you know, you can't force someone. If you got to force them through threat or violence or sort, you, you're never going to change their minds. You just strengthen the rest of them, Right? The yeah. Anyways, it's kind of like what's happening to Trump. All this stuff they're trying to put him in jail and imprison him, not let him run. All this it's just strengthening his base because you can see the uh, the lies, the deception that they use, that, that how they twist the words and do everything else, lie, and it's becoming more and more obvious um, to persecute someone, right? So anyway, and don't think that they're just going to do it to him. Because anyone who follows him or, or don't even have to be him. Because, you know, I, you know, I like, uh, what's this guy's name? Robert Kennedy. I mean, he says a lot of good stuff, too. I really like him. I don't vote for any particular party. I vote for whose values most line up with the word of God, right? And his principles. So there's that. But uh, anyways, um, yeah, they're going to become so difficult to work with. Uh, where is it? I don't work with dangerous where am i at here yeah very harsh troublesome quarrelsome hard to approach difficult even dangerous by this idea of because their their strength is being diminished the the more they're holding on to the deception of this world right it's being diminished uh, uh because of their separation from god as this divide this division grows grows greater, right? In uh, deciding basically, which will decide who is a sheep or a goat. And like I said, as God separates his sheep and goats, so are the governments of this world. Who's going to give them a problem and who ain't? And if you're a Christian, conservative, uh, people who believe in the truth and want the truth to come out and all that, then you're a problem to the governments of this world because they all rule us through lies and deception. Unfortunately, it's so sad. Um, so where are we at? Separation God is this great divide. Who's a sheep or a goat? It will become more and more obvious. It'll become more and more clear. Okay. That and he has come down from, a, and so have we, from a higher place to a lower one. That And this, for us, it reduced, it put us in like a trance. It stupefied us, a sleep of death, spiritual death. That's why he says, arise, arise, awake, awake, all who are dead. That's us. We're dead spiritually. We're born into death and condemnation. We've separated ourselves from God. We disobeyed him and we took on the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil by being birthed, like I said earlier up here, into these physical, temporary, rotten, dying, decaying, mortal forms. Right? Because we thought God wasn't telling us the whole truth. You know? He just didn't want us to experience evil and death and suffering and pain. No parent wants for the child. And I'm sure he told us the truth. We just didn't believe him. I don't know. Can't remember. <laughs> right? Anyways, or maybe it's just so full of pride that I could uh, not fall under the spell of the evil one. But as soon as you're born into a physical form, you're trapped. You're done. That's it. You've been stupefied. Dead. Spiritually. Died spiritually, basically. But you don't want to remain in that state. So he came here to save us and awaken us, raise us from the dead. Anyways, uh, peaceably. Okay, yeah. So he came here from a higher place, one, reducing our intelligence and our ability to work things out, to work out our differences, 
between ourselves to do it peaceably. And man, I saw an example of that yesterday at work. And they're both good guys, man, that were doing it. Both great workers, good guys. One's a true Christian brother, but he let his flesh rise up there for a second. Right? So there's that. As we, it happens us all, right? It happens to us all. So and this creates even a greater divide between each other so that no one, no, you know, no one might have the power and strength and be able to prevail against these people because it's the vast majority who are turning darker and becoming more hostile and difficult and even dangerous so that we uh, are unable to prevail against them in the sense of possession of their minds, like having an influence over them by the revealing of the truth by giving it out to them. They just hate it. It makes them even angrier, okay, because they are completely owned and possessed by their flesh, by the demonic and being influenced demonically by Satan, you know, through their carnal minds, their carnal nature. Okay. And they have become overtaken. They have been overtaken by this world that is under the power of the devil. They will grow more and more volatile, you know, so you don't know when they're going to just be set off. Okay. Growing more and more volatile. Basically they're unsure in all their ways. They're being tossed in to and fro by all the things of this world, the pressures of this world. They're growing more and more fearful because they are like an animal, an animal, a beast, a body, the image of the beast. There it is that speaks to you all day long. That, that voice has to be cut off and you have to turn your face back to God and start hearing his voice. Okay, there it is, truth. Okay, they're like an animal that's been caught in a trap because we all are. We're like an animal caught in a trap. But once, once you're saved and born again of the spirit, now you can see things more clearly so you don't even fear death anymore. You know that everything, whether good or bad, everything that occurs is for your own benefit that, that has been allowed to happen or by God, basically. Letting us reap what we sow in that, to teach us right from wrong, good from evil, love from hate, all these things. And how much he loves us and cares for us and all that. So we know it's a good thing. The chastisements from God are a good thing so we can learn and grow. Okay, so... Anyways, they're growing more fearful like an animal in the trap so that none are able to be led out to safety by putting their faith and trust in Christ, by believing the truth anymore because of their hatred and their biases and their false beliefs on account of this traveling, this sojourning in this world, living and loving a lie, the deception of this world. Okay, that is like a cemetery. It's like a cemetery. Okay, it's it's the land of the dead. Everybody's buried in these earthen vessels, bodies. Okay, for so long, thinking because we've been taught that it's true life, but it's actually death. They're believing a lie. Okay, now there's so much more contained in that verse, huh? So much more. So now let's go on here and just read the remaining verses. And I'm only going to look at one word in verse 31 here. So, and behold, they crowd out, they cried out saying, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And that word's the time, right? Of his judgment and everything else. And the, the, just before the reign of the Messiah when sheep and goats are separated and everything. And yeah. Okay. Anyways, now verse 30. And there was a good way off from them, a herd of many swine that were feeding. Okay. Now verse 31. So these devils, these evil spirits, these demons besought him saying, if thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. So this is like how it's tied into the prodigal son. He woke up in a pig pen, eating the pigs, and he was so hungry, he is even eating the same food as them. And then he came to his senses, I'll go ask my father's forgiveness. I'll turn back to him because even if servants are treated better than I am and have food, you know. So anyways, this word swine is 5519. And basically it says swine. And I'm like, well, I don't see anything here, right? Because it kind of ended there, pig, swine stuff. Cool. That's an unclean thing to the Jewish people. So he told me to look up what it means biblically, what it represents. And, and being led by a spirit, right? So um, 
these swine are unclean. They're unclean. They are physical forms, unclean, okay? According to the law, they are unclean. They are abhorred animal. They are a beast, a beast, a abhorred animal, okay? And they are like scavengers. Pigs, swine are scavengers. They feed and consume anything, anything. And that's like us when you're in this world. You're deceived. You're consuming all the lies and deception of anything. You're tossed to and fro, right? By all the pressures and the things of this world, you're deceived. You're consuming anything, you know, that is not good, not healthy for you. So they'll feed on anything. They are not selective about what they consume and take in. Uh, willing to believe just about anything. They are of a dark mind. And they do not hear or obey. Okay. Um, so closely is used to replace power. Oh, and, and, and if you understand this, um, and just crossed my mind that um, a lot of times, if you understand, they use pig parts to replace parts of our heart, parts of our hearts, a pig part. Think of the spiritual implication of that pig parts to replace part of our hearts and they consume everything, right? Understand that. Okay. It becomes part of our hearts and they can actually grow genetically modify and grow uh, human parts in a pig. You know, like ears and I think even maybe other organs and things too, possibly. I mean, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. So there's those verses right there, man. Uh, don't go into the swine. <laughs> don't be like a swine. Don't be like a pig, right? Consuming anything. So there's that. I hope you gleaned some spiritual truth, these nuggets, these treasures that come from above. And I hope I gave it out uh, decently. I know I... My mind and mouth don't connect so well sometimes. <laughs> Punchy, right? Sometimes better than others, whatever. I know, I, I know it. It's just, I, I, I can't do anything about it. You know, it's just the way it is getting old, man. <laughs> so there's that. All right, God bless you. Love and respect everybody. Show them love and show them respect as best you can. And it's getting more and more difficult. Like I saw yesterday, the work environment's getting more and more volatile. And a lot of it is because they're placing more work and burden on us. It's like, oh, you want me to work on this and have this all ripped apart and locked out, but then you want to call me over here to real quick fix that if it can be quick. But you, they don't know how long things will take. I mean, okay, this broke off. Okay, well, we've got all these broken bolts. Do we even have a part? You don't have the right part, but I can use this part. So now I got to modify the bracket that it mounts on. And uh, I mean, it could take hours and hours, but yet they want that line running by lunch. But yet you've got it tore apart because you're fixing something because they gave that to you. Like they're shooting themselves in the foot. And that's what this world's doing. They're shooting themselves in the foot because they're living and loving a lie. Trump ain't coming back to you say, to save you. These med beds aren't going to make you live forever or even for hundreds or thousands of years. This crap ain't going to happen. God's word will play out. It will play out. You know, I don't know what's going to occur, but I do think that just because the truth is starting to trickle out through alternative media, it's getting more and more obvious. These people are going to just set the whole world on fire, basically. Mm, yeah. Start World War III or a civil war because that's what they're pushing for. And, and I think at my work, it's like the Hegelian dialect, right? They cut our numbers so bad, so we can't get all the work done. So then they say, oh, we got to bring in contractors to do your work. And they're not giving us the right parts for the job, or they're making jobs take twice as long because they were robbing Peter to pay Paul instead of having a new part there ready to go. We got to go find one and steal one. And, and sometimes that could take hours and hours just to lift up the brackets and the big robotic arms that they're on and to get these bearings or the motors or parts off of brackets, whatever. That could take a long time. You know, they're making things drag up. They're, they're shooting themselves in the foot, man. You know, yeah, it's, it's the craziest thing. I don't understand it. So don't shoot yourself in the foot. <laughs> you know, turn to God and uh, allow his spirit to lead you through his word. And you'll start to understand it. It'll, it'll just start to blossom. It, it, and, and you'll understand and you'll be at peace. Even though it's like a double-edged sword, you're like, oh no, you know, it's not what I thought. We're in a prison, body's a prison suit. I'm actually born into death, not life. Like it cuts you to the bone and most people are vehemently against it and unwilling to accept it. Turning the world upside down, right? Your body's the image of the beast from a spiritual perspective. Now, how is it gonna play out here in the physical world? Because Satan will try to deceive us. Is it AI? Is it, you know, whatever they're good, you know, because 
he, it's all about deception, man. He's so much smarter than you think. It's time to wake up and realize who you are in Christ and where we came from and our purpose and his purpose. And, you know, be at peace, be at rest because he loves us. And so when you, you pass away, however that happens or catches us up, we get to go home. Just realize that setting us free, clearing that record that our bodies, our memories of our bodies keep against us, our sin, our guilt, our depravity, all these things. Set free from that. We're set free from the law. We're set free from that curse. Not saying that we're not to obey it. Don't use it for an excuse to sin, right? But just know that you're forgiven if you slip up a mistake and do your best because there's habitual sins, habitual sins that are common to mankind. That it's it's our body that just leads us astray and it, or, or takes over at a point. Like I saw yesterday, you get losing their discipline. You know, and both good guys, both, I believe, are Christian guys believe in Jesus Christ. You know, maybe one more than the other, but uh, still, we can lose our temper, right? Becoming volatile, harsh, harsh, hard to work with, troublesome, right? I can work with anybody. I, I don't argue anymore with people. It's like either you're going to do this or you're not or whatever. We're just going to do it. You want to do it your way? I got no problem. Do it this way. There's always a couple different ways to do a job, right? Yeah, so we're all, just like we're all given uh, some treasure from God, like the parable of the talents. And some are given more and some are given a little less and some are given a little less, depending on your situation, your your physical abilities, all these things. And, it, and, it, and it's not necessarily all this spiritual knowledge, but it's just your gifts, your talents, your abilities, everything. Compassion, friendship, a listening ear, a shoulder to cry on, a monetary perhaps, or, or your talents. You know how to do things. You know, you can knit or you can draw or you can paint or, or you know how to do construction or, or pipe fitting, electrical, anything. All these things that you do for free to help out your fellow man share your talents and gifts with, right? In any way that you can. All right. So there's that. God bless you. Love and respect everybody. And I hope you have a great day.